And just before our pastor takes a seat, um, is next year in America. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. How many of us would love to be there? Don't worry, we'll just charter a plane and go. Or by that time, my own aircraft will have come. Look at the way you're looking at me. You mean it's too sudden? It's too soon? I can't have fleet of aircraft before next year? What a mighty God we serve. How many of us know we serve a mighty God? Is that God mighty enough to meet all your need? Is that God mighty enough to exceed your expectations? Now rise up to your feet. Seriously speaking, how many of us believe that God can bless you so much between now and next year that you have your own private jets? Oh, so now you believe. Now you believe. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Never had a God. And just bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. You don't want to express yourself before God. I know the way you dance at home. You know, some of us will know how to dig it at home, right? How many of us really serve a mighty God? How mighty is your God? How mighty is your God? I want you to really express yourself before your God. Dance to Him. If, if you want to break down, you want to. Don't break down so that you don't break down. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, my God. 
clap your hands to him and bless him. Bless this mighty God. Worship this mighty God. Adore him. Adore him. Adore him. He's a great God that does great things. A mighty God that rocks what mighty works. Go ahead and just praise him. Go ahead and 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 praise him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Father, we adore you. 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 Father, we adore you. We worship 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 you. We bless you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. I can't even hear your amen. I said, in Jesus' name, we have worship. Now, you will lift up your right hands to the heavens. And you pray to God and say, Father, Father I, confess I confess that you are the mighty God in every situation of my life. As I stand before you this afternoon, prove yourself as a mighty God in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray to him. Prove yourself as a mighty God. In all situations of my life, in all my challenges, in all my trials, prove yourself as a mighty God. Prove yourself as a mighty God. Prove yourself as a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Prove yourself as a mighty God. Father, intervene in my life. I need desperate divine assistance from you. You are the mighty God. None like you. None like you. None like you. None like you. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. we have two prayer points more meanwhile the lord says he wants to conquer cancer in people's life this afternoon you are here this afternoon they've told you you have cancer 
whichever type you've been told you have they say you have a cancerous growth or something that has to do with cancer while we are taking the next prayer point please come and kneel before the altar of the lord as surely as the lord god of heavens live before whom we stand today will be the last day you will ever carry that cancer in your body in the name of jesus now the rest of us still lift up your hands to the lord so if you are that person please quickly come forward don't joke with this moment you are going to pray to him and say father i cannot you say father in the name of jesus do mighty works in my life this afternoon Works that will leave me with a great testimony. Do it in my life this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray to God. Open your mouth and pray to God. Those that are coming out, please kneel down. Just kneel before the altar. Kneel down. Kneel down. Kneel down. Father, do great works in my life. Great works that will leave me with great testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Do in my life. In my life. In my life. Great works. Great works. Great works. Great works. Great works. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Lord said there's someone here. In the recent times, you've always been afraid to sleep. Because every time you lay down to sleep, it's as if something comes to choke you up. And most nights, you stay awake because you fear that you might die if you sleep. The Lord said truly, there's, there's a strange presence around you. And the aim is to take life out of you but because you are here this morning whatever is behind that experience the lord is taking it away from you today this person i'm talking about in almost a month you could count the number of hours you closed your eyes to sleep if you are that person, please come and stand to the right of the altar. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Those of us that close our eyes and we sleep, we don't understand what it means. For a man to feel like sleeping and yet he can't close his eyes to sleep. We're going to pray to God again. Thank you, Father. Lift up your two hands to the heavens. Okay. 
The Lord said there's someone here. You were given something that looked like a black stone to swallow in your dream. You was resisted, but you were overpowered. And you swallowed that thing. And ever since you woke up from that dream, you have never felt healthy in your stomach. You feel that that thing is there. And it brings so much discomfort to you. If you are that person, please quickly come out. There is deliverance for you this, month, this afternoon. It looks like a black stone you were given. You were forced to swallow it. Please come. You can stand towards my left side of the altar so that we can differentiate you. And the rest of us, we are going to take the, the, the third prayer point. <laughs> you will cry out to God and say, Father. Father. And please, this next prayer point, don't stop until I say, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. You are going to pray to him and say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. You displayed your almightiness in Egypt. And you broke the arms of Pharaoh. Today, manifest your almightiness in my life. Everything that has enslaved me. Father, break his bow over me. Open your mouth and pray that prayer to God. Thank you, Jesus. Break every adversity. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
thank you father in jesus mighty name we are prayed pharaoh never wanted to let the people of god go but by the time god manifested his wrath upon the land of egypt he was forced to release them i stand on this altar this moment and i declare the wrath of god over every power every influence that has held you captive in the name of jesus their arms over your life over your business over your health over your finances are broken in the name of jesus they 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 are broken You are breathing the hair of freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are appreciating the Lord, you can clap your hands for Him better. God bless you, please have your seats. Job 41, let me just say, the little time will permit us to say. Again, I welcome all our brethren from Jesus' house, Baltimore. God bless you. You're welcome. Job 41. I read from verse 1. If you have your Bible with you in church, please open to Job 41. I'm reading 10 verses, but please pay attention. Are we all there? All right. I read from verse 1. Can thou draw out Leviathan with an hook or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Can thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a, a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or will thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Can thou fill his skin with barbed irons? Or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare steer him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who then is able to stand before me? Who had prevented me? I should repay him. Whatsoever is under the old heaven is mine. You know, sometimes it's good when you hear God make a boast of himself. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes God just wants to show us how great he is. And God started by talking about this strange creature, Leviathan. I know many of us, we, we've never come across one. But some of us have read about Leviathans in, this, in, in, in Encyclopedia. It's so huge a creature. I, I read something about it. That the length of it is about 300 miles. That's about 300 miles in kilometers should be times 1.6. About 4.6. 
480 kilometers in length. We're talking about an animal. It means if the head of the Leviathan is here, the tail probably will be in Akure. It's that long. And God says, who is that man that has boldness enough to go and play around it? God says, go near it. And then you won't be alive to tell the story. And hear what God says. God says, if the Leviathan can be that powerful, how much more the one that created it? He said, who is that man that can stand before me? How many of us know the whale? You've seen one before. A whale. How many of us? All right. It's recorded that the Leviathan eats one per day. His meal is one whale per day. But remember, the whale swallowed a human being. Who is that man? That is strong enough, bold enough, daring enough to challenge God to a fight. Who is that man? What a mighty God. In Psalm 74, when you read from verse 13 to 15, Psalm 74 from verse 13 to 15, the Bible says that God breaks the head of the Leviathan into pieces. As huge, as terrifying as it is. With just a little breath from his mouth, God scatters the head of the Leviathan. How mighty is this God? I was reading somewhere in the book of Psalms, the Bible says that God has measured the waters in the seas in the hold of his hand. The entire seas, God measured the waters in his hand. How big do you think you are before God? No wonder the psalmist says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting dust, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord. The Lord strong and mighty. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting. And let the king of glory come in. I don't know what that problem is. I don't know what that situation is in your life that is big enough to stand before God to challenge God to a fight. What I'm telling you this afternoon is this. Every problem that has followed you to this auditorium today is in trouble. Because in his almightiness, God will crush its head in the name of Jesus. I said God will crush the head of that problem in the name of Jesus. You are not hearing me. I said God will crush the head of that problem. In the name of Jesus. Who is that man that says to you, I will show you when you have God behind you? Who is that man? Every oppression against your life, every conspiracy against your life, as surely as the Lord God of heavens live, today the Lord will bring an end to it in Jesus' name. I said God will bring an end to it in Jesus' name. I said God will bring an end to it in the name of Jesus. I've also seen in the scriptures promises. I don't know how many there are. But listen to me. There is no promise 
that is too big for God to bring to pass? None. When God promised Abraham a son, he looked like God has made a mistake for this time. At least for once, God made a mistake. But did God bring his words to pass or not? There is no promise, I repeat, that you have found in the scriptures that is too big for God to bring to pass. As God promised you fruitfulness, God is so mighty, he can bring it to pass. As God promised you good health, he is so mighty, he can bring it to pass. What is that promise that is hanging on your life that is yet to be fulfilled? I've come to tell you this afternoon, the mighty God will bring his word to fulfillment in your life. In the name of Jesus. Because God is limitless in power. It's limitless. You can't place a limit around God. You can't. If the Leviathan, one that God created, cannot be limited by any man, by any other creature, how much more the one that created it? You find a story in the book of Mark, an interesting story. The story of Jairus. Mark chapter 5, you read from verse 21 to 43. 21 to 43. I'll just summarize the story and then we'll rise up to pray. Jairus' daughter was sick. And Jairus sent words to Jesus. If as a matter of fact, he didn't just send words to Jesus, he went to meet him. He said, Lord, please come and help me. My daughter is sick. And Jesus prepared to, to go with him. And as they were going on the way, there was an interception. Jesus was delayed from getting to the house of Jairus. Many of us were experiencing delays right now. It looks like there's something that has come to intersect between you and God. What you are desperate to get from him, it looks like something is taking God's attention from you. But listen to me. Man can be delayed. God can never be delayed. Man can be stopped. God can never be stopped. God will always come through. Irrespective of the, of the time, the seasons, God will always come through. And I want to decree into your life, everything that looks like a delay, in your life right now, the Lord will turn it around into a miracle for you. I said God will turn it around into a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What do you think was going on on the mind of Jairus at that point when that other woman came? And then Jesus had to attend to something else. I'm sure if Jairus had his way, he will have pulled Jesus away from that woman. But because he didn't have the power to do so. Some of us, if we have the power, we will have held God like this. And said to him like Jacob did, you must answer me today. today. But this man kept calm. And as soon as Jesus was done with that woman, and he went their way, a messenger came and said, oh God, don't trouble the man any longer. Your daughter is dead. If you were Jairus, what would be on your mind? And Jesus said to him, don't be troubled. Your daughter is not dead. She's only sleeping. It's only God that can address death as sleep. No man on earth can. Because he's the mighty God. He controls life. He controls death. As a matter of fact, he's the owner of death and life. Death is his messenger. Life is a blessing from him. 
How then do you think death and life can work against him? May I stand to prophesy into your life? Everything that pertains to death that seems to be having a field day in your life, the owner of death will take it out of your life in the name of Jesus. I said the owner of death will take it out of your life. In the name of Jesus. May I stand on the strength of the confession of Jesus. That that which you thought is dead in your life. Is not dead. Is only asleep. And because he's sleeping. I command it to wake up now. I command it to wake up now. In the name of Jesus. That dead business is coming back alive. That dead womb is coming back alive. In the name of Jesus. That dead marriage is coming back alive. In the name of Jesus. He said your daughter is not dead. She's only sleeping. And by the time they got to the house, it was another story entirely. People were crying. The whole place. Everybody was mourning because hope was gone. And Jairus looked at Jesus again. And Jesus said, don't worry. Let me tell your neighbor, don't worry. <laughs> Can you tell your neighbor with a smile, say, don't worry. Your hope is not gone. It's not gone. I'm telling you, your hope is not gone. And Jesus took him by the hand and went to where the child was placed. And he got there and held her by the hand. And spoke to her. You don't speak to the dead. Jesus spoke to that girl few words and then the, the girl got up i perceive what jesus told her is i've told them you are not dead you are sleeping so get up <laughs> and the girl got up may i stand under the authority of god to speak into your life every positive thing that people have said is dead in your life and they say you can never get to enjoy it before i command that thing to come back to life let it come back to life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Doctors will tell you that the moment the heart stops to beat, the person is gone. But not so with the mighty God. Not so. Not so. The heart that has stopped beating for several hours received life again. The lungs that have stopped breathing for hours received life again. The eyes that have sunk in came out again. And everything about her life received life. I stand on the strength of God's word. And I prophesy into your life. Everything that has gone bad in your life. I command right now. Let God's goodness overshadow it. In the name of Jesus. Let God's goodness overshadow it. In the name of Jesus. You know, it was by the power of the spoken word that everything that is came to be. You are a product of the spoken word of God. So everything about your life must respond to the same word. And if I stand on the word of God this afternoon, I speak into your life. 
everything about your life that has not given you joy everything that each time you consider it you ask god but god why i speak by the authority in the world let a change come over it in the name of jesus let a change come over it in the name of jesus let a change come over it in the name of jesus let a change come over it in the name of jesus let a change come over it in the name of jesus let a change come over it He is the mighty God. The mighty God. Think. As we rise up now. Think. Please rise up. Can God reverse the irreversible? Yes. Think. Can God change the unchangeable? Think. Can God do the undoable? Yes. Think. Is there any situation God cannot salvage? Think. Now the issues of your life are they bigger than God? If they are not bigger than God, lift up your hands to him. And begin to commit those issues to him. Begin to commit those things to his hands. Begin to commit those things to his hands. Even the devil knows his owner. He is God that owns him. So even if the problem you are battling with came directly from the devil, the devil knows his limits. He knows his limits. You can come under the shadow of the mighty God and obtain freedom for your life. Begin to commit those situations to him. Begin to pray about them. Say, Father, I know you can reverse the irreversible. I know I know you can change the unchangeable. I know you can bring life out of death. I know. God that turned water to wine. He changed water to blood. He parted the sea by the strength of his arms. Commit those situations to him. Commit those situations to him. Commit those situations to him. The one that can take the poor out of the dunghill. The one that can make the barren fruitful. He can turn an applicant into an employer of labor. The despised today, the Lord can make the esteemed tomorrow. Commit those issues to Him. Commit those issues to Him. Our God is mighty. He transcends time, He transcends obstacles. The report of doctors and experts. God is beyond them all. He can overrule judgment against you. The mighty God. 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 Thank you.
the mighty God. Are you tired of talking to him? In two minutes, we'll round up with these prayers. But talk to him. 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 Barriers can be broken around your life. Yokes can be broken. Afflictions can come to an end. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Per adventure, you are here this afternoon. You have not given your life to Jesus. Have you seen this God big enough to be your God? Have you seen him big enough to commit your life into his hands? Have you seen him big enough to undertake for you in life? You are here this afternoon. You have not given your life to Jesus. You have not surrendered your life to him. And you would like to do that this afternoon. Please just place your right hand on your chest as I pray for you. Place your right hand on your chest wherever you are. Father, I want to thank you for those that are taking this decision to surrender their lives unto you right now. You are the mighty God. I'm asking, oh God, that you would, in your mercy, accept them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you will forgive them all their sins. You write their names in the book of life in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, Lord, you will give them the power to live as your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if you place your hand on your chest and you pray that prayer, please just quickly come before the altar. The altar is the place where we meet with God. Please quickly just come if you pray that prayer. While we are still standing, we are blessed to have in our midst this morning our pastor, all the way from United Kingdom, Pastor Shegun Kingsley. I call him a mommy. Praise the Lord. He's going to be saying a word of blessings upon us. Please, those that place their hands on their chest to pray that prayer, please just come forward. Come forward. I've already prayed for you. Just touch the altar and then some people will attend to you. Receive grace from the altar and then some people will attend to you. So I will invite our pastor. He will say the final prayers. Pray over our offerings and then close us in benediction. Let's put our hands together again. For Pastor Shege. Hallelujah. That your hallelujah is standing on one leg. Hallelujah. Amen. If you know the word of the Lord spoken from this altar become effective in your life, let me hear you shout a better hallelujah. Join my faith with the prophet of God who had delivered the word who had prayed. And make a declaration over your life. The same way the word of God that accomplished Saul to become the king. The same way the word of God accompanied David to become the king. May the word of God, may he accomplish you to your throne in the name of Jesus. Whether you say amen or not. There is a palace made for you, ready for you to occupy it. And I declare by the word of the Almighty God, 
every palace Jehovah God of heaven has created, has made, has built for you. May the word of God, may he assure you he. The scripture says, by two immutable counsel, in which it is impossible for God to lie. John chapter 1 verse 14 says, and the word was made manifest in the flesh. John said to us in the first John, that there are three that bear witness in heaven. God the Father, the word, and the Holy Spirit. This day, may every word that has proceeded out of this altar, may they be a witness to your breakthrough. May they become a witness even unto your enlargement. May the word of God, may it become a witness to your heart. So go up, increase, enlarge in the name of Jesus. You, that woman that the doctor said your baby is dead, asking you to come and never quit it. I speak by the word of the Lord that baby is alive. Get back to the doctor and tell the doctor he did not see well. I decree again by the word of the Lord. The scripture says the grass withered, the flower faded. But every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Bible said they are here and hear me. And the word of the Lord that I know said you will live. He said you will live. So declare the glory of God. That baby, that deadness have been pronounced upon you. I stand as the prophet of God. Join my faith with the prophet in the house. And I decree over your life that baby become alive. Let the power of resurrection let it bring you back to life. The doctor have not seen well. If he sees in the physical, we see in the spirit. And we declare upon you, you are alive. Begin to kick back in your mother's womb. In the name of Jesus. You that has been turned down in the bank, saying they can't finance that project. God said I should tell you, pick the document back to the bank. You will be accepted I decree over the life of everybody hearing the sound of my voice. As the prophet has declared over your life, may the word of God, may it become effective in your life. The scripture says concerning Samuel, the people of the town says, he said, I know a prophet. Every word that proceeds out of his mouth does not fall to the ground. I decree that every word that has proceeded out of this altar this afternoon uh, may it become effective in your life. May it become effective in your life. Uh, may it become effective in your life. And I ask that that same word that God said to Peter, there is a bank in the water. The name of the bank is called Fish Bank. Go there and bring money. And let's pay the tax collector. I decree by that same word by the reason of your offering today by the reason of your sweat that you are bringing her by the reason of your spoil that you are giving to your maker may your finances may he know no dryness again in the name of jesus may grace come over your finances may grace come over your finances i prophesy to your life every businessman every businesswoman effortless triumph effortless trial may you achieve without sweating may you rejoice in your finances without sorrow may grace work for you may glory work for you every mouth speaking against your finances i silence them every altar speaking against your finances i silence them may the lord teach your hands to her May the Lord give you idea to blossom. May the Lord enlarge your coast. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. May we set the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be with us now and forever. And surely.